Oh hi all, welcome back to my channel. As you can see I'm just getting grandma set up for my latest sewing project. What I'm going to be doing today is making a seat pad or a cushion for a wooden chair. If you want to watch how I do that, follow me into today's video. These are the items that I'm going to be using for today's project. I've got a ruler, I've got a fabric marker, you'll also need a pen and maybe some paper, um, a needle threader, that'll come in useful, some pins or some plastic clips. I've got a video on a review I did on plastic clips which I'll put a link in the description box for you. I've also got a pair of snips, small scissors for cutting threads, a tape measure, my pin cushion uh, which is holding my, my needle and thread. I'll just pop it out of the way for a second. Um, obviously if you're going to be making seat covers you're going to need fabric. So I've got some upholstery fabric. Now I was quite lucky I managed to pick this fabric up at my local thrift store charity shop. Um, I think it was about five for all of it. Um, don't underestimate your local secondhand store or thrift store or um, charity shop because they can be a treasure trove of secondhand material. Things like curtain fabric or heavy cotton is ideal for seat co covers or cushions. Um, and the other thing that you're going to need is obviously something to stuff your cushion with. And what I'm going to use is cabbage. Now I'm not talking about the green vegetable variety here, what I'm actually referring to is the fabric that gets left over every time you do a sewing project. What I do is I save it up and then I use it to stuff things like cushions and dog beds and things like that. Um, it does the same job as toy stuffing or you could even use a seat pad but what I'm trying to do with this project is I'm trying to do it sustainably so I'm using secondhand material and fabric scraps. So let's get on with the project. The first thing that you're going to need to do is obviously measure the seat of your chair. Um, now what I do is measure the depth of the seat which is basically the measurement from front to back and the width of the seat starting with the widest point which is the front from here to here and then as you can see with this particular chair it gets narrower as it gets to the back so what I'm going to do is at two different points just measure the difference in sizes as it goes on towards the back of the chair. Now your measurements are going to be different because you'll have a different chair but the, the measuring that you need to do is the same. Pay particular attention to the shape of the base um, and follow me to the next stage where we'll use those measurements. Once you've got your measurements you can either transfer the measurements to paper or you can draw the template for your cushion on to the actual fabric. Now what I've done is I've marked it with my um, tailor's chalk which is over here. Um, I'll try and make it a bit darker so that you can see the lines. And you can see them at the side here and it's just a case of with your tape measure Measuring out the same measurement that you got from your seat, oops, which was 18 inches across the bottom there, oops, and then narrowing it down to the measurements that it was towards the top. The top was on my cushion, um, 14 inches, so that's what it goes across the top there. Now, what I did was with my ruler. I literally used the curve of the ruler to follow the curve down to join up to the straight edge at the bottom and I just did that on both sides. It's just a case of following it around like that just to curve just to curve it off. Now when you've got your measurements transferred to either your paper or your fabric, whichever way you're going to do it, what you need to remember is you also need to allow a seam allowance. 
So I've roughly drawn out, um, it's about half an inch seam allowance and what I'll be doing is I'll just be doing that all the way around so that it reminds me to cut out an extra bit to allow for the seam. Now as you probably notice I'm just eyeballing the half an inch but what you can do if you want to be a little bit more precise is you can actually get yourself one of these um, guides. Uh, you can pick these up online, you can pick them up at box retail stores. Um, I'll put a link in the description box below. Um, obviously I'm an Amazon affiliate so if you purchase anything through the links in the description box I get a little bit of a, a commission back on that which helps me buy chocolate biscuits. Um, I've got this set for half an inch um, and what I'll do is I'll just pop it on the fabric and I don't know if you can see that but I'm actually spot on. There's the edge of the template and there's the seam allowance and it's coming out at exactly half an inch. When it comes to cutting out your fabric there's two ways that you can do it and uh, which way you use is entirely up to yourself. You can either cut the pieces out individually uh, which is a good way to do it but the one thing that I would ask you to bear in mind if you're doing it that way is for the second piece that you cut out you turn your pattern piece over the other way so that you make sure you've got two mirror images and not two bending in the same direction because what you might find you've done is when you've been curving the pattern round with the ruler you might have put more of a slant on one side than the other so by turning your template over so that you've you're cutting one out with the template upside down and one out with the template the right way up you make sure that the curve will match up properly. The other way of cutting it out is you can actually fold your fabric in half like that so you've got two pieces and you can cut the, um, the template out of both sides at the same time. If you're doing it that way make sure that you stay away from the fold because you, you don't really want the pieces to be attached, you want them to be separate. The one piece of equipment that I forgot to mention that you'll need is a pair of fabric scissors. Um, now these are actually pink in shears. Um, these are the ones that have got like little triangles on the blades and that just helps you cut the fabric uh, so that it stops it fraying. Don't worry too much if you haven't got any pink in shears because you can just use normal fabric scissors. When you've cut out your two pieces you'll have a back piece and a front piece and you do that for as many cushion pads or seat covers as you want to make. Okay the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start getting them ready to sew them together and the first thing you're going to want to do is place the two sides of the one seat pad right sides together like that so you've got the wrong sides on the top and the bottom. Now grandma doesn't have a um, seam guide so what I'm doing is I'm just going over the pattern pieces just to make sure that I can actually see that half an inch as I'm sewing around and I'm just going to mark it all the way around Oops. Like that. for the next step it kind of depends how you're going to stuff it um, and that will dictate how much space that you need to leave open at the one end. If you're using a shop bought foam seat pad you'll probably need to leave the whole bottom edge open so that you can get the, the seat pad in. Because I'm going to be using bits of cabbage or bits of um, scrap fabric all I really need is um, about five or six inches of an opening to get the stuffing in. You can also use toy stuffing. Um, again, you'd probably need about the same gap for toy stuffing, about five, six inches or so across the top. And what I do to remind me not to sew that bit, I grab a couple of plastic clips and I'll just put those oops, on the edge of the fabric, roughly giving me five or so inches. Now, you can either clip all the way around the outside, you can either pin all the way around the outside or you can do what I'm going to do and just sew 
without any clips or pins. I'm just going to leave it open like that and just go for it. So it's time to go to the sewing machine. What we're going to do now is finish threading grandma up. Um, so what we've done is we've gone from the smaller thread across to this um, thread guide here. We're going to go round the tension discs. We're going to go through the take up lever. Like that. There's a little guide just on the front of the face plate which we're just going to slot into like that. And then the next one is the guide on the needle bar and then we thread the needle which is where this little thing comes into. This is a, a needle threader. Um, I think I got this in a travel sewing kit but what I'll do is I'll put a link uh, in the description box on where you can get these from. They are incredibly useful. Now what we do is we find the hole in the needle. Um, these things uh, thread from left to right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the needle threader through that way. Grab the end of the thread. Actually I'm going to chop a bit of that off because it's a little long. And then I'm just going to thread it through the needle threader would kind of make this bit a little bit easier if I actually went to fetch my glasses. I'll be back in a mo. Now I've got a chance to be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> We're going to try that one again. We're going to put the needle threader through the needle. I think I may have mentioned before that it usually takes me ages to do this. Okay, now we're going to grab the thread and we're going to thread that through the thread threader like so. Oops. Now this usually just does it, but because I'm filming it, there, gotcha. Now you just pull it through to the right and then that's threaded. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push it under the foot and pull it to the back. And now what I need to do is bring the bobbin thread up and to do that I'm just going to turn the hand wheel until it catches the bobbin thread and just pull it up like that. And now I've got both threads at the top of the machine. And now we're ready to start stitching. And I'm just going to put this under the machine. I'm going to move this plastic clip out of the way for a bit because I don't really need it anymore. And I'm going to put the foot in line with the half inch C marking that I've put all the way around um, the, the cushion cover. Okay, grabbing the threads, both threads, I'm just going to put the needle into the fabric and then I'm just going to take a couple of stitches with the hand wheel like so and then I'm going to leave the needle in the work, lift my presser foot and spin the fabric round. You might remember from um, the video I did on sewing with a treadle, Grandma doesn't do reverse, so I have to sew back over what I've just done to do back tacking. Um, most modern machines have got reverse, so you literally just push a button and you can go backwards without having to turn anything around, which is really handy. I'll put a link to um, the video where we we're sewing with Grandma the first time in the description box below. What we're going to do now is we're just going to turn the handwheel a couple of times just to go back over those stitches, leave the needle in the fabric with the press foot and then turn it all the way back round to the direction that we started in originally and then it's just a case of sewing all the way around. a good idea to stop a little bit, lift the press foot and just turn the work just to make going around that bend just that little bit easier for you. And take a couple with a hand wheel, get back in line with your seam allowance, lift the press foot, 
turn the fabric and then get going again. plastic clip. I'm going to keep my finger there so I know how far I'm going. And there we have it. Okay, so leaving the needle in the work, I'm going to lift the press foot, spin it round, Oops. Put the press foot back down and just do a couple of stitches back over. do next is clip the curves so that when we come to turning this the right way out um, it's easier to get a nice smooth finish around the outside and it just turns all that bit easier. Now you can either use pinking shears for this or you can use normal fabric scissors Sorry about this. like these and you literally you just clip the curves so you make little cuts into the into the fabric like that, making sure not to go through your stitching line because you'll have to restitch it if you do that. And you just go all the way around the curves doing that. Now, if you want to, what you could also do before you start clipping your curves is reduce your seam allowance a little bit because that will also help you um, turn it around to the outside. Once you've clipped all the way around. Just turn the bag um, the right way out by pulling it through that little hole we left earlier. And just keep working until you get all of the, the right side of the fabric showing. Push out any of the more stubborn bits until you've got your cushion cover the right way out. Now what we need to do is put the stuffing in. Now as I mentioned I've got a box full of um, bits of fabric left over from previous projects and to make the stuffing what we're going to need to do because these are quite sizeable chunks if we just stuff the, cu the cushion with these like that we'll just get bits of fabric that don't move around too easily and it's not going to be that comfortable to sit on. So what we're going to need to do is cut this into smaller chunks so that it moves around more in the cushion cover and makes it more of a, a spongy seat. And to do that what you need to do is grab your scissors. Um, the one thing that I would mention with this when you're making your cabbage into confetti or even just bigger pieces than confetti, make sure that you put a covering on with a finger that you use to move your scissors backwards and forwards because over time you will find that you'll get a blister forming there especially if you've got a lot of cabbage to chop up and it's just a case of just no particular style needed you just kind of like just chop into it like that what we're aiming for is we're just aiming for small bits like that and you keep doing this until you've got enough of your cabbage 
made into confetti and you can stuff your pillow with it. Obviously if you're using toy stuffing you don't have to do any of that, you just take it straight out of the bag and shove it into your cushion cover. Once you're happy that your seat pads as stuffed as you want it to be, the next thing that we need to do is sew up the hole that we left to stuff it and turn it the right way around. Now you'll notice that it will automatically want to fold over so just follow that folding line when you, you stitch it. And what I'm going to do is just hold it for now. I'm just going to stick a plastic clip just about there like so. Okay now the next thing that we're going to want to do is get the needle and thread which is in my pin cushion. There you go. Now, oops. There's two ways of starting off when you're hand sewing. You can either tie a knot in the end of your thread, or you can do what I do, which is I'll just straighten that out a bit. I'll st stitch it into the the fabric until the ends pretty close to where I'm stitching and then I'll go over it again and then the little loop that it leaves I'll just thread the needle through that and that forms a knot. Now it doesn't matter whether you tie a knot in the thread before you start or whether you tie the knot in the fabric when you've stitched it as long as you've got the thread attached to the fabric, the end result's the same, so it doesn't matter which way you do it. You find the way that works the best for you, and you do it that way. So now what we need to do is we just stitch all the way across the opening um, to the other end. Now what I'd recommend when you're doing this is to get yourself one of these, that's a thimble. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this thimble fits the finger that you use to push the needle through the fabric. Now in my case that's this one, I use that one. So this thimble fits that finger. Now I know some people use this finger so their thimble fits this finger. So before you go out and you buy a thimble just check with yourself, Let's see if I can turn it around this way for you, put a needle through some fabric and just see which finger it is that you actually push that needle with and then that will tell you which finger you need to get your thimble for. I already know that it's oops, this one. And the, the way that you make sure that the thimble fits is it should actually just stay on your finger. Whatever you do with your hand it shouldn't come off, it should be just an extra part of your finger. Okay, the stitch we're going to use to close this gap is, um, well I call it a whip stitch but I think it could also be called a, a ladder stitch. Basically what we're doing is we're putting the needle in just pull that a minute, through the fold on the one side and then bringing it up through the fold on the other side like that and you just push it through and what the thread should do is it should disappear into the fold line so you can't see it. So we're just going to carry on doing that all the way across the opening. You push the needle through the fold on one side and bring it up in the fold on the other side and then just push it through like that. Try and keep your stitches small for neatness. In through one fold, out through the fold on the other side. And as you go up you'll see that those little stitches magically disappear into the seam and we'll just keep doing that all the way up until this hole's um, stitched up. I'll just do it a couple more times for you. Into the fold on that side and out through the fold on the other. Now depending on what kind of fabric you've got that's either going to be easy to push through or harder to push through. So I recommend using the thimble.
Okay, now that we've neared um, the end of the opening, what we're going to do now is cast off, obviously. And to do that, it's pretty much the same as when we started the hand sewing. Um, put your needle through one of the folds on one side and out through the fold on the other. Pull it before the little loop of thread disappears. Put the needle through that loop and just pull. And then you do that again over the top. So you put it in through one fold, out through the other. Put your needle through the loop before you pull that through. Oops, you can see the loop. There it is. And then pull and then that just secures that knot for you. And then it's just a case of snipping the thread off where the scissors are there. Let me thimble off, might make it like a little easier. And you just snip off like that. And the needle can go back in. Jemima, there you go. Jemima's my pin cushion by the way. And there's the finished cushion. There you go. So it's just a case now of giving it a bit of a shake, moving that stuff in around and getting it nice and flat. And there you have it, a finished seat pad for your wooden chair. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more sewing adventures with me and even meet my cat Biscuit, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell to be notified next time I upload a video. In the meantime, wherever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing with, embrace your creativity and have fun. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.